Welcome, Sophia and Camilla. You're from the Ethnography Network. Um, could you tell us what's the main idea that brings people to your network? Um, so, what brings people or what attracts people to our network is the fact that um, we are the only network in IRA uh, networks that are most directly dealing with methodology. We created a space to really discuss in depth uh, the ethnographic uh, methodology, not only as a set of techniques, but also at ontological level, epistemological level, theoretical level. And then what's the main topics that you're discussing in your mm -hmm. network over 20 years, many? Mm -hmm. Well, there has been some changes in, you know, some trends, flows regarding the main uh, topics. Of course, the umbrella is always ethnography, is always people doing uh, research um, with ethnography as a method. Uh, but, of course, there are people that are doing uh, teacher education, uh, youth studies using uh, that uh, methodologies. So, the idea is to, to, to give people space for their own topics within this uh, umbrella. But we have been, in the past, for example, in the first years, uh, teacher education was um, uh, a topic that people uh, were researching and presenting in an hour, our network. Uh, at some points, of course, there was a need to discuss other topics and we, st we start discussing new topics as online ethnography. Uh, so a couple of years ago, I don't know, 10 years ago, and it was very interesting as well and it relates with other um, uh, aspects that attracts people. And at this moment we are also discussing, for example, autoethnography, uh, because a lot of people are, you know, sending papers about autoethnography, so we are discussing that. So I think it's a, a space also for that, for burning issues. There is a, a common set of values, if you say so, namely about uh, diversity and inclusion, and also we have a, a repertoire of theoretical background that are also coming from our countries and our, and our references. And I think that this diversity of perspectives and ethnography has many schools of thoughts all over the world. So that's how we uh, contribute also for that. But also because ethnography is useful for, uh, for educational policies. Because ethnography is about to stay in a set for a long time observing, interacting, taking notes, reflecting, interpreting, and these are case studies. That, that leads very nicely into my next question, which is, what does your network value in terms of educational research and how it benefits society? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, it's, uh, it's uh, exactly, it's, it's connected a little bit with this, it's, uh, because the fact that we are looking in depth into some educational phenomena doesn't mean that we cannot extrapolate to other contexts and similar realities. So the fact that sometimes we are doing case studies uh, and looking to a specific uh, interaction doesn't mean that we, can, we cannot generalize. Of course, this is not statistics. We are not counting, but we are looking in depth, sometimes into numbers. So our ethnographic approach sometimes is to numbers. So we analyze data, statistic data from an ethnographic perspective, because we are not just using technically the method, we are using the ontology, the epistemology, the approach, the need to, to understand what is behind the creation of those numbers. And sometimes we do ethnographic studies to understand better what the, those numbers m mean. So, Sophia, how does your network contribute to the European Educational Research Association and to its mission? So one of the um, relevant aspects of the mission of the of ERA is the fact that uh, as a, a, a group of associations wants to be part of a dialogue, an European dialogue or at global level. So I think that each network's um, uh, role is also to try to answer a little bit and try to address some of this, uh, this part of the mission and be part of a, a dialogue through the specificity of our network and what we are discussing, but I think that we might contribute at 
policy level and also for this this mission. Now you've been network convener for link convener for uh, four years. Four years. Well, think back over those four years. Is this something you're particularly proud of that you've done in that time? Uh, when I started becoming a, a, a link convener uh, four years ago, I tried to make some continuity and some, trying to do a little bit things differently, namely, you know, organizing sessions um, and some call for papers specifically for some topics that we wanted to discuss. Um, but. Uh, nevertheless, I think that uh, what I did is similar to what other conveners uh, did before me. Uh, and is your network uh, connected to other groups and associations, perhaps outside ECR? And does that impact on your research? Mm -hmm. We are uh, connected with this organization, Ethnography and Education. It is geographically based on uh, in Oxford, uh, where we meet uh, every year. So next week, usually, we organize another conference, smaller, uh, only for ethnography. And uh, every usually is uh, follows a ESER. So because sometimes people come from other countries, you know, from USA or Australia, and they want to, to stay. Uh, and so next week it will be held in uh, Oxford, in a new college. Um, and we have a journal uh, in connection with this uh, network, which is uh, Ethnography and Education, and it's from Taylor and Francis and Routledge. And at the moment I am also the editor-in-chief of, of that. Perhaps I can bring Camilla in. Camilla, as I understand, you're the incoming and the incoming Lincoln. Well, can I ask you, if someone's putting in a proposal to your network, what are you looking for in that proposal? I would look for in a proposal for this network that it keeps in mind that this is a very open and friendly network, being capable of discussing both um, methodological aspects, uh, theoretical aspects, and aspects that goes into a lot of different subjects in going, of course, hand in hand with educational research. For this next question, I'm going to ask you both, but for a very short answer, off the top of your head, what do you really like about ECER? Well, it depends on your, uh, on your, in the stage of your career. So in the beginning, I was, as a PhD student as well, uh, I was looking for you know, um, new insights, new idea, uh, ideas to open my mind. So that's why I was, you know, covering all networks to see what's going on, to see to which network I would fit better, uh, where I could, you know, speak and have different ideas. And in the middle of my career, I might be looking for something more in-depth. I want to discuss in-depth. I want Time. So I think ESER, because of its diversity, gives me the opportunity to, to do these two things. If I want to something that opens my mind, I can you know, travel around and see what uh, uh, different networks are doing. Uh, if I want to go in depth on something, I can find a place in a network which has some specificity. So I think I, I, that's... And Camilla, what do you like? It would be along the same line, um, the diversity and, and the, the flexibility and the openness. I haven't um, visited a single network who haven't um, welcomed one with open arms. And, and what does the conference mean for your network? Well, I think um, the story is, um, tells the story for itself, um, that we have a strong connection um, and that we have a strong network and that we like working, discussing research together. Uh, well, thank you both very much for coming in and talking to us today. You're welcome.